Hi, thank you for watching Amethyst Plants. I'm Amy and I love plants. This is my dog, Lucy, and today I wanna to share with you a nursery haul that I got from Yard and Garden Nursery in Hazeldale, Washington. It's my favorite local nursery up here in South Washington because it has really reasonable prices and it's just laid out really beautifully. So I'm excited to show you what I got. I am so excited to share the plants that I got. I'll start with smallest and go up to biggest, kind of like usual. The first plant that I got, um, which was only $4.99, is a ficus rubber plant, and this is the ruby variation. I believe it's called ruby because the leaves have that pink tinge to them, and then if you look at the back, it's almost like a pink glow on the leaves. They're gorgeous. And looking down at the older leaves, it looks like the pink still stays on the edge. So I haven't had much luck with ficus rubber plants before, so I'm excited to try this little one and maybe gonna set it up in my new plant grow light area to just give it a little hope. Okay, um, I also, my sister has been wanting one of these plants. So I got this plant because it reminded me of her and it was such a great price. So I can kind of send her pictures of it or think about her when I'm caring for it. Thanks, Lizzie. Next, I got a begonia. Now I'm normally not very, I mean, I don't know a lot about begonias. So this is a little bit of a gamble, but this stood out to me. And oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. I believe uh, the tag said it didn't come with an insert, but there was one on a plant near near it, and I, it was the same plant. And I believe the tag said that it was a hardy white begonia. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research and find out exactly what this plant is. It was only $10, which I thought was amazing. And I'm just gonna kind of show the plant a bit. It has just a lot of growth. And then the underside of the leaves is this cool kind of fuchsia red color. So it's really nice. And you can see it from the front too. I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep it as an indoor plant and that I can kind of pop it amongst a lot of green that I have for a splash of color. So if you know anything about caring for begonias and have any advice, for how to keep this healthy and how to keep this happy, please comment below and let me know. So the next type of plant I have to share is a Peperomia scandens, and it came in a hanging basket. So it is huge and gorgeous. It's also really happy. It's doing these weird alien little Peperomia flower stalk things here and there. Um, and I got this plant because I have a Peperomia scandens variegata upstairs in my room, and it seems to like the spot that it's in. It's much smaller than this and not as well established. So I'm hoping that maybe I can put them next to each other and they'll do well side by side. And I think they would look pretty cool together. So I am excited for this one. Um, this is a waxier leaf than most peperomias. Um, it's almost kind of feels like Hoya leaves a little bit and the stalks or stems on it are pretty firm. So it is a fragile plant, um, but it is really gorgeous. Kind of lines like that. So peperomia scandens, I was really happy to find that. I haven't seen it anywhere else since I got the Peperomia Scandens Variegata at Portland Nursery. I'm extra excited for this one. I'm kind of getting into philodendrons and I'm really hoping that I can also keep those healthy and happy. So if you have any tips for philodendrons, what type of light or humidity they like, comment below and let me know. I found this beauty. This is a philodendron black cardinal. I hadn't heard of it before I saw it but I'm in love. The leaves are gorgeous. It's a pretty well-established plant uh, for being only $15.99 in a six inch pot. So I was excited about that. And looking in the pot, I think there is at least two, maybe three plants kind of clustered in there next to each other. And 
when the leaves unfurl, they are this almost like black, kind of brown burgundy color. And my guess is that they fade to this darker green as they kind of relax and live in. So I was so excited to find that one. Um, now the last one that I found is the biggest one. And of course the most expensive. I paid $44.99 for this plant and it's another philodendron. It's huge and I love it. This one is a philodendron red Congo. You can see on these two unfurling leaves that as the leaves unfurl, they're almost like a pink orange color and the stems and stalks uh, on the newer growth is a deep burgundy color and on the older growth, a brown burgundy color. So I think that's where it gets the red from. I was really excited to find that. Um, I had just kind of done a deep dive in the last month or so on plant drama, plant YouTube, and I wasn't aware of the philodendron pink Congo drama right when philodendron pink princesses started getting popular. And I like the way that a Congo plant looks. Um, so I'm just excited to have found a philodendron red Congo. And I'm excited that it's not, I don't know, a like pink Congo ripoff or a plant that is grown with a lot of extra chemicals or anything like that. I also wanted to show you a little bit about how I prepped these plants for introducing them to my home and what I did when I first got them before I was able to film this video. So what I did is a new cleaning routine that I am just getting into and I'm gonna share a little bit about that now. Lucy, my dog, keeps bringing me different toys to try and get me to play with her while I'm filming. So I have a tennis ball and a bunny in front of me and she just came down the stairs with a pair of my socks in her mouth. So I'll definitely play with her as soon as I'm done. Um, anyways, I wanted to share a mistake that I made um, when I first started getting into houseplants and it took me probably about eight months to realize that I really need to be preventative about pests and I need to have some type of routine for quarantining or cleaning my new plants that I bring in. So, Lucy, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna throw the socks for her. Um, so, the mistake that I made is I wasn't doing that for about eight or nine months of acquiring houseplants and I had over a hundred and I started to notice some mealybug problems. Luckily, I think it was only in about 15 to 20 plants and I was able to quarantine them outside and I went through a process of disinfecting them that helped me develop a routine for bringing new plants in. So what I do when I get new plants now is I put them in a corner away from my other plants or if I can and the weather allows, I'll put them on my back patio. The first step that I do is I mix some dish soap with water and I think there's probably half a tablespoon of dish soap in here, maybe a little bit less because I've just been adding water. I added a bit too much at first. And I'll go and spray the leaves off. Then I'm gonna use neem oil to do the same thing. And I'll talk about that process a bit as you see it. I've brought my plants outside onto my patio and I'm gonna start by spraying them off with my dish soap mixture. I'm gonna try and get all over the plant with this, underneath the leaves, down by the dirt, and just really all over. Then I'm gonna go inside and let it dry for a bit. Next, I'll come out with my neem oil spray and I'll do the same thing. All over, underneath the plant, near the dirt. If it's a big one like this, I'll let it dry and then rinse it off with water before bringing it inside. Smaller ones, I'll just bring inside. Neem oil smells disgusting. So once I've done my two rounds of sprays and rinsed the plant down if I've chosen to, I'll bring it inside and start using a microfiber towel to dry off the leaves. This plant was actually still a little bit too wet and I ended up walking away from it and letting it dry a bit further. After it dried to the point that I wanted it to, I used the same microfiber towel and I sprayed some of my neem oil spray onto the towel and I wiped down the leaves with that to get any water spots and any kind of dirty spots off. 
and the plant looks so much better once you've done that. Then I'm ready to put it into my plant collection with my other plants. Now that I am assured it is pest free and cleaned. Thank you for watching Amethyst Plants today. Um, I hope you have a great week and I can't wait to show you more plants once I get them. Thanks.